Hey, what's up? Liron here. If you remember, last week I did a video on composition for watercolor painting. Now, I've been asked a couple of times to make a similar demonstration only with a landscape. The last time was a cityscape. This time uh, I want to show you the exact same principles, different ways of looking at the scene, developing one view into a multitude of paintings and different options. Um, using composition but this time I want to switch it up a little bit so what we'll also do is take it one step forward and apply a very simplistic light watercolor wash okay it's not meant to be necessarily uh, realistic or even impressionistic it's just for us to know what's where and to make the process a little faster okay so let's take it to the table and get started so this is our reference photo this time I hope you can see everything properly and what I want to do is first sketch it as it is, okay? Before we start cutting it down and dicing it into different compositions, we're going to do one as it is. But remember, even when we do the entire frame, we still have the freedom to crop out some areas. Uh, so what I want to do is generally crop down the lower section because I feel like it's a little empty and I really like those small houses. And by the way, I cheated a little because it's a landscape for sure, but there's a bit of an element of a human made structure here. But in any case, I'm going to lower the horizon line because I don't want as much land underneath. Okay, so that's the horizon line. Now we have uh, the mountains in the background, which are going to take about a half the tallest point is going to be about half the distance from here to here, maybe towards a little upwards, okay? Uh, and in this kind of crop, I'm focusing on all of the elements, the structures here and the mountains in the background. So it's more about the, the relations between the mountains and the, the human-made structure, okay? So here we go, mountains. I don't care as much about the sky here, none of that. Now the, the small houses are kind of going like this. And remember, this is kind of a compositional sketch, so I don't need too much information. In fact, I, I prefer it to be a little empty so that I can look at the entire thing and ask myself, is it working? Um, so we have one here, and obviously I kind of missed the, the part to the right. Let's, let's fix some of that. This is why we do this kind of thing. It's not perfect the first go, but in any case, I'm going to have that taller cape here, not the exact same height, and then it goes down like that. Um, and here, I will add another hint of a structure, but I'm going to keep it minimal. So already I changed up quite a lot of stuff, but the main thing you want to focus on is something here, mountains here, and kind of the, the you know horizon line that's imaginary. We're barely going to see this. So now that we have this very simple compositional sketch, let's paint it in the same kind of manner, very, very simplistic. So to do that, I'm going to start with the sky. And again, this is a compositional sketch, you don't need much, so I'm just going to put in some sky. The sky is relatively light, there are some clouds, let's get some kind of an effect going. I barely have any angle at the paper right now, uh, but this is for the sky, okay. And then for the mountains, and again, I'm going to do this in one go, the mountains go a little darker. So for that, we'll need, and they are a little more brown, so we'll add those elements in as well. But again, this is just a compositional watercolor sketch, not too much information. We don't need almost anything to really uh, convey the message. So here we go. And this is all about levels of wetness, as always. So you have to slowly learn how much water you need, how much paint you need, but that's something you learn with time, but you have to practice it. So here are the mountains and they're slightly darker as you can see than the sky. And if they're not dark enough, you can simply add a little more paint and darken them a bit more. I'm just picking up whatever I have on the, on the palette. You can't even see it, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just trying to get the you know, the, the, the concept across. So here we go, rooftops. Uh, now, as we get to the ground, and let me move some things a little to the left. I'm gonna green it up a little, so I'm getting some of that green. And, but it stays quite uh, dark. The, the scene itself is relatively, um, the, the light isn't really punchy or contrasty in any way. The real part where you can see some light is on the actual houses. So here we go, like that. This goes around the rooftops. This is a shadowy area. 
I'm gonna connect the shadowy areas with the ground, so a bit of blue, because that's a really cool shadowy area on the right here, on both structures. So we got this, we got that. It could look a little fragmented because of the white walls. Let's um, alleviate some of that. We'll connect another shadow here, shadow under the rooftop, just like that. The rooftops are a little red-ish, uh, brown, sorry, but I'm gonna do them red-ish, so like that. And this is pretty much everything you need in this kind of a quick compositional sketch. We, we care about where everything is um, and not too much beyond that, okay? So I'm just getting some more paint because I want to darken this base area here and see if I can contrast it a little more with the rooftops, you see? This should be a little darker too. And I can make some edges here a little more well defined, but this is pretty much it. And then there are some details here, some you know foliage, some trees, but this is pretty much it. Now, if I've gone a little too far into the rooftops, I can always lift back. You see, I'm drying the brush on the towel and I'm just lifting back some of those uh, lighter areas, okay? But this is the, the very gist of it. If you wanna be really quick about it, of course, there are some foliage near the ground here. Um, you could add a tree just to make it more interesting and voila, we're already <laughs> changing the scene completely. Um, and again, I don't want you to look at it as a representational work. This can be messy. This can look very weird. It doesn't matter. What matters is where we place our elements, okay? And I think the foreground can and should be a little darker. So let's add a bit of darkness to it. You see how abstract I am here? Just putting in some elements, if you will. And that's it. That's it for the first compositional sketch. Uh, we're gonna set this aside, let it dry, and then we're gonna try a couple of others, okay? So let's now do perhaps two more interpretations of the scene. Uh, and I want us to this time really go into the realm of abstract, because even the uh, previous example, let me show you, we went uh, a lot into the realm of representational, which is great. It is fine, I have nothing against it, and you know, another layer, and this is perfect, will sharpen things up. But I want, this time, I want to remove even more pressure of us. Uh, so let's start with something that's really, really cool, I think. Let's go with an extreme, um, what do you call it, extreme landscape orientation. So we get this kind of a weird <laughs> shape. Now, what would you put into that kind of thing? So I feel like there has to be some kind of a vertical element. And the most interesting vertical element here is actually the mountain ridge. So let's go for that. And we're gonna put in these couple of bumps. I'm starting from left to right. I'm putting in that first kind of a rounded ridge and then a bit of a smaller ones. And then finally, I'm gonna add this largest one that's really near the edge. Nothing wrong with that kind of a composition. And then it's very simple. Again, we're gonna, and I'm, I'm gonna make a separation this time between the two uh, washes. We'll see how we can do that, perhaps with just keeping a small white gap between them. But uh, in any case, this is the sky. And in this kind of a painting, what'll be maybe more dominant is the cloud. So you may end up leaving some gaps for the cloud. So let's do that, actually. Let's go ahead like this. Now let's kind of go at it in a very loose and fun, uh, way, add a bit of redness to this thing, or at least neutralize the, the, the blue a bit, just because we can. And then let's take this cloud that I stuck there in the middle and kind of blend the edge here. This brush is notorious for not really blending edges well. You'll see in a moment I'm gonna have a hard edge here, but that's fine. Um, using a spray gun, I, I tend to have better results. But in any case, now we got the sky in and some nice interesting shape of clouds. Uh, and now we can start working on uh, the actual ridge. Uh, and that's gonna be darker again. So let's get a bit of that green here on the palette. And I'm gonna move it a bit to the left. And let's neutralize some of that with the red. So we get this brown. Let's add a bit of yellow to make it actually more brown. Uh, let's see what we got here. I want it to be a little more interesting. Let's add a lot more yellow and a bit more red. Let's go with an orangey brown, a little more saturated. Here we go. And I'm just gonna put in the ridge here. And here we have more um, space, mental and physical, to think about um, the details within the mountains, or perhaps the, um, and notice how they're now warm. 
had I wanted them to be a background, I may have done them cooler, but here we're actually treating them as a warm element of our painting. There's a hair here. Please get off my painting, please, bye-bye. <laughs> And you can see here and we get these nice blossoms that don't matter because this is again just an, an attempt at the composition. And here we go. You can clean off some of those white gaps if you don't like them. And then what you can do is you see there's a shadow on the right side of the mountain. So you add a bit of blue maybe, darken it up a little. And then you add it onto the right sides of the mountain tops. And let's have them cut through a little more. And you see now you can play with, and I told you it's going to be a hard edge. Let's go back and soften it a bit. And here we go. You got a composition. It's an interesting one. I actually like it. You can develop this into a full-fledged painting. And you don't have to go edit a la prima like I did here, putting everything together. Let the sky dry, come back and do another wash for the mountain ridge. You see? And it works beautifully. Uh, so now let's do another one. And I think this time we're going to focus on the, the actually, the building on the right. Now let's go for a, for an awkward uh, portrait orientation. Landscapes and portrait orientation I find to be sometimes challenging. Uh, but in any case, we'll get this house on the right. So the horizon line is fairly low. You could first put in the house, then figure out the horizon line. Uh, and let me zoom in a bit. So here is the horizon line and I'm gonna put in the house. It's not gonna take too much space. So this is where the light turns into shadow. We have the side of the structure like that with a highlight here that I like a lot. And then the rooftop connects to the edge of the painting and that's perfectly fine. We have a bit of foliage here on the right. And then there's the mountain, the kind of mountain going down. By the way, I think it's a volcano. So it goes down like this at an angle. And then maybe this foliage can go above it. So that's a perfectly valid composition as well. Let me take a different brush. And every time I take a different one, just to make things interesting for me. And you know what? Let's make this one a very happy and vibrant scene. So I'm going to use very pure blue for the sky. I could put in some clouds here, but you know what? Let me show you an, a cool thing to do. So what I like to do sometimes in the sky is uh, apply wet and wet, obviously. So once I have this, I can go back with some thicker paint and kind of put in this shape here. And I love to put in these shapes and maybe help it blend a bit, but you don't even have to because it looks like a f kind of fluffy cloud sometimes moving along. So I don't know, I like that kind of thing. And then for the ground, I'm gonna keep it very simple. So we'll start with the mountain in the, in the background. Again, I'm putting everything in one go. You don't have to, you can let things dry, but this is a very simplistic approach we're taking here. You could make the rooftop uh, a little lighter and then have the contrast here, but I'm gonna be more um, loyal to the reference in that regard. I'm actually just gonna put it in a, I'm gonna contrast it using color rather than value. So I'm gonna pick up a bit of Pyrrole Scarlet, a little contaminated, mix it with the, um, uh, what do you call it? The White Knights Quinacridone Red, and here we get this beautiful mix. You have to remember this edge is about to dry. Let's add some red some, uh, sorry, uh, yellow, and then get a green, put this green here, this is the foliage, and then we can move along with kind of a neutral gray, maybe a bit of yellow onto the ground. Again, you see I'm not going for anything that's truly representational. I don't care about any of that here. I just wanna have fun and decide on a composition that may work, okay? Now a bit blue for the building. I know it looks fragmented, but here we're gonna solve it in an instant. So this is the, uh, whoops, that's actually the light side. So you know what, let's flip the light and shadow conditions. We can do that. Let's flip them, because I made a mistake. So this is a shadow. Now this that used to be a highlight turns into a shadow. And here we go. We flipped it in an instant. And then we have a window here. That was so funny. Um, and then what we can do is already, if we have that situation, let's cast the shadow by the tree. So this is the tree, let's get it a bit darker. And then let's have it cast a shadow on the house, or to the left rather. Doesn't necessarily have to be on the house. And let's make the tree a little stronger to contrast it more with the background. Let's put in a bit of a shadow under the rooftop here. And we're pretty much done. We played around even with the direction of light and shadow and got a really cool result. So. Even if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. I could even lift and then darken the right side. It doesn't even matter, but uh, for me, I don't know. I, I love the way it looks anyway. So, and then I'm gonna add a window here and here. 
And this is it, another composition. You could add a tree here behind so that you can make the rooftop pop a little, so that's like trees. You don't have to, you can, if, if it looks good to you, uh, go for that. You could do so many things here and you are not committing to anything that's final. That's a beautiful part. Notice how beautifully this part uh, dried. Uh, you're not committing to anything final here. Um, and it's not overworked too, which is something I like. It's it's kind of, it's a big mess, obviously, because we're not really painting what we see to the T, but uh, it's also not overworked. It feels rather fresh, which is a good thing. Uh, so in any case, now you see how I broke it down into two other shapes. Another cool exercise you could try doing, and I just thought about it this time, this moment, is you pick an area you like in the painting, and then you start painting that and open it up from there. So for example, I really like the trees under the, the cliffs or the mountains. So if I start with those, let's say I'm gonna put in, and I don't have a frame, so that's even better. So I'm starting with the trees under that. I'm gonna neutralize it with a bit of red. And this is really fun because you don't even put in pencil lines. That's the beauty of it. And then from that, you can stretch up the mountain ridge like so. And I know I'm simplifying and I'm making the scale a little different and smaller, but just for the sake of the exercise itself, I want you to see this in action. And then you get the ridge with the largest part to the right. And let me neutralize it. It's not green. <laughs> it's kind of brown. And then from there, you can cut around the houses, leave a bit of a, you know, a highlight on the wall or whatever, put in the ground with a bit of pure yellow, let it flow, do whatever you want. And I find this to be super fun. Um, and then you can just be creative about it because composition should be fun. That's the part where you're making the decisions. So make the decisions that will make you happy. You know, I think that's the bottom line really. Uh, and then I'm gonna put in some foliage here, just spread it out a bit. That's it, you got another scene. You can decide it will have no borders. So then let's blend this edge. And this is pretty much it. And notice how there's a nice sense of place only in this very simple kind of frame. Uh, so in any case, I hope you enjoy this one. Now we can wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. One thing I do have an announcement. So my How to Sketch People book is finally out on Amazon. For now, it's only the Kindle version, but I'm working diligently and uh, very hard on getting the um, uh, paperback version out soon too. But if you like how to's, uh, how to books in their digital form, be sure to check it out. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. It's a work I've been, it's a book I've been working on for so, so long because I was so busy with other projects. I barely marketed it, barely talked about it. But if you want a book format on how to sketch people, be sure to check it out. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video real soon.